ngayon ang masaya. Taas ang kamay. Yes, kahit naka-online, itaas ang kamay na yan. At kahit parang hindi mo pa feel na maging masaya, iproclaim na agad yan. Kahit parang walang dahilan para maging masaya, itaas pa rin yung kamay na yan. Because we know the Lord will still bless us and we receiving it even in these times. Amen? Let me tell you kung baat ka dapat maging masaya. Kasi, hindi aksidente ang panonood mong to. You are not here by chance. You are here by divine appointment. Bago ako pa ipangana, gusto nyo ng Diyos na mapunta ka dito at mapanood mo to. And let me declare this to you. He has a miracle for you today. Ngayong araw, we are ending our fantastic series, Bounce. To bounce is important to success. Take note of that. Tapansin nyo ba, the road to success is not a straight road. Marami paliguliko, may pakanan, may pakaliwa, may pasisag with lots of detours. Ngayong araw, I would like to talk, I would like to talk about the principle of obliquity. Next. What is the... Ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Paliwanag ko kung anong meaning ng obliquity. Obliquity is the principle of being oblique. Punish! <laughs> Believe na kayo sa akin, no? Let me show you... Let me share with you how obliquity works. A detour... A detour, rather, can bring you to a bigger destiny. As we continue, let us now... Pray our favorite prayer here in the feast. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healings, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. Beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let us sing. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path okay that's jesus talk to us and help us amen papunas mo na ako ng pawis at medyo may kainitan ngayong araw <laughs> let us continue when it comes to dithor ang unang taong naisip ko ay si joseph yeah as in the joseph dreamer When he was 17 years old, this brash teenagers appear in one family dinner and announce, Hi dad, hi mom, hey brother one, hey brother two, hey brother three, four and five. By the way, he had 11 brothers. After getting all of them, he cleared his throat and said, <clears throat> Last night, I had a dream. I saw all of you bowing low to me. Gee, isn't it that strange? But well, if this is my destiny, I'm going to get used to it. 
Brother 2, can you make me some iced tea? Brother 3, can you fan me while I eat? You guys might as well get used to serving me. Sa madaling salita, ang sinasabi ni Joseph sa kanila, One day, I'm going to lead you guys and I will be the governor of the family business. I-imagine nyo na lang reaksyon ng mga nakakatanda niyang kapatid. Panigurado, hindi nila sinabi na, Oh, that's wonderful, Joseph. We're so happy that you now what you want to do. You know what you want to know in your life. Bravo! Hindi no, galit na galit sila. Sabi nga sa Bible, di ba? Tinapon siya sa isang balon. At habang nararon siya, madilim doon, malamig, at gutom na gutom na rin siya. Siguro nagdasal na lang si Joseph ng ganito. Lord, this looks like a wrong step in my career path. It would, it would get worse. Nung sumunod na araw, binenta siya ng mga kapatid niya sa mga mga ngalakal for 20 pieces of silver. And this trader sold him as a slave to an Egyptian named Potiphar. So mula sa pagiging anak, naging alipin siya. Can you imagine how far this was to be his dream? Hindi pa natatapos doon ang paghihirap niya. Mrs. Potibar wanted to be close to him as in very close. Being a person of integrity, he said no to repeated seduction. Isang araw, sa isang madilim na sulok ng bahay, she grabbed him by the collar and said, Bakit ngayon ka lang? Bakit ngayon kung kailan ng aking puso'y mayroon ng iba? Alam niyo si, alam niyo sinabi ni Joseph? O tukso, layuan mo ako. At tumuyok pa ka. At tumabak, tumakbo siya papalayo. Unfortunately, naiwan ang suot niyang damit. Sa pagka-reject ni Joseph kay Mrs. Potipar, sumigaw siya ng rape! And our poor Joseph was thrown into prison. Kaya simula sa pagiging anak, naging alipin, at ngayon, isa na ang preso. Palala ng palala ang mga nangyayari sa buhay niya sa bawat araw na lumilipas. Palayo na siya ng palayo sa nilanais niyang destiny. Habang nasa kulungan siya, may nakilala siyang dalawang preso. The baker and a butler of, of the pharaoh who had a dream that bothered them. Tinanong nila si Joseph to interpret their dreams at, at ginawa naman niya. Sinabi ni Joseph sa baker, I'm so sorry, in three days you will be hanged. At yun nga nangyari. Sinabi ni Joseph doon sa royal cup bearer, In three days you will be reinstated to your former position. He then said, weighing your back, working in the palace, pouring the martinis for the pharaoh, can you appeal my case to your po to your boss? Ang ako naman yung cupbearer na gagawin niya. Kaso, nakalimutan na lang din niya si Joseph. Dalawang taon kailangan manalagi si Joseph sa kulungan. Pero isang araw, nagkaroon ng nakakabahalang palaginip ang pero, And all his wise men couldn't interpret them. Doon naalala nung kapir si Joseph at pinanggit na nga niya sa Pharaoh. Pinatawag na nga si Joseph kaling sa ulungan. Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dream. Sinabi niya, Pharaoh, there will be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. During the seven years of plenty, I suggest you start saving 20% of the produce of the land for the seven years of famine. Nagustuhan ng pero ang advice niya. Kaya naman si Joseph ay na-appoint as governor of the entire country. I've seen the principle of liquidity work in the lives of almost all the successful people I know. Right now, you may be in a difficult times in your life. Siguro, yung trabaho ang gustong-gusto mo ay hindi pa naibibigay sa iyo. O kaya yung babae o lalaking gusto mo pakasalan. O yung papunta ka pala, yung pupunta ka lang sa Singapore para magkape. O you failed in a board exam or your business is losing money. May maganda akong balita sa iyo. You're in a detour. You are in detour. Gigantic obstacle have appeared between you 
and your destiny. You may feel like your life is getting worse by the day. You may feel farther from your destiny today than you were yesterday. If you will ask me, why is God allowing this? Here's my answer. Because he wants to tell you this. Your dreams are too small. Your goals are too funny. Your ambitions are too tiny. I've got a bigger destiny for you. God is telling you, I've got a better job for you. I've got a better man for your life. I've got a better future store for you that you want that you want you, that you want right now. Here's an illustration of journey of Joseph's journey. From being a son, para ang destiny niya is going to the governors agad of the entire country. Pero pinagdaanan muna niya ang mga napagdaanan niya bago napunta sa pangakong destiny sa kanya. This is what I mean by the principle of obliquity. Let's read it from Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. When he was already a governor of Egypt, his brother comes to ask for food and for forgiveness. Joseph told them, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, for saving of many lives. Perhaps you have enemies today. Believe that what your enemies intended for harm, God will use it to bless you more. Let us pray. Father, we may be having a hard time in our life right now. And it seems like our des desire destiny is getting far away day by day. We surrender everything to you, Father. We believe you have a better plan in our lives. You alone are the only one who knows what's the best for us. Amen. Let's sing. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Detour led to bigger destiny. Let me give you example of detours that happened to three people and how these detours led them to their bigger destiny. Number one, kilalang kilala natin to, Steve Jobs. He was 21 years old. Steve Jobs pounded the apple in his garage. After a few years, Apple became a very successful computer company. But nine years later, he all his own board directors booted him out from Apple. Perhaps you're wondering, how in the world can the founder of a company be fired from his own company? At yun nga nangyari kay Steve. But that was what happened to Steve Jobs. Talk about gigantic detour, huh? Suddenly, all his dreams crashed into oblivion. But while Steve was away from Apple, many things happened in his life that prefer prepared him for his comeback. 12 years later, after Apple hired Steve Jobs again, and he made Apple even bigger and better than ever. Just to give you an idea, when Steve came back in 1987, Apple stock was worth $4 per share. Last week, Apple was $610 per share. Today, Apple, in terms of market capitalization, is the most valuable company in the world. About his detour, Steve Jobs said, I didn't see it then, but it turned out that getting fired from Apple was the best thing that could ever happen to me. The happiness of being successful was replaced by the lightness of being a beginner again. Less sure about everything. It prayed me to enter one of the most creative periods of my life. Have you also been fired? Have you been rejected? Has a door closed in front of you? Don't be discouraged. You're in a detour. Believe that God is preparing you to a bigger door. 
Number two, Cornell Sander. Harlan David Cornell Sla Sander Rander owned a regular restaurant. But one day, a literal detour came into his life. The government built a huge highway that made everyone bypass his restaurant and he was to force to close it down. This happened when he was 66 years old. Because of closing down his restaurant, he became broke, living from one social security check to another. His monthly check, $104. If you were 66 years old and your cherished dream of owning your own restaurant goes up in a smoke, what are you going to The only thing Colonel Sander had in his hand was his chicken recipe. So he went from one restaurant to another, knocking door to door, offering his chicken recipe in exchange for a little royalty for every chicken sold. Guess what happened? They said no. In many places, he was thrown out. How dare he offer his chicken recipe? Their chicken recipe was better. Do you know how many restaurants rejected his offer? 1,900. If I was Colonel Sander, I don't think I would have that. I would last at 50, beyond 50. If, if I received 50 rejection, I would have just given up and retired. I retire, living in my small house, collecting my social pension checks every month. But Colonel Sander didn't. Threw it up. One restaurant said yes. And Kentucky Fried Chicken was born. Nine years later, he was 75 years old. They, there were 5,000 plus restaurants that were using his recipe and ordering sauces from him. Imagine if that detour didn't happen. Imagine if that highway wasn't built that deterred all the customer of Cornell Sanders away from his restaurant. Perhaps it'd still be managing one restaurant, perhaps two, perhaps three. But because of the detour, KFC today has 20,000 branches around the world. Here's the truth. Small dreams will have to die so that bigger dreams will come through. Small, if small dreams don't die, you won't even think of the bigger dreams. Finally, St. Alfonso's Ligurie. Alfonso's Ligurie was a brilliant young lawyer. He was a, such a good lawyer that for eight straight years, he won in all his cases. But one day, he was 27 years old. He lost one case because of a simple error he made. He misread a document and he was totally humiliated in court. But that was the detour that God used when he was very depressed at what happened. That was when he heard a call from God. He left his profession and joined the seminary. Three years later, Alphonsus was ordained a priest. Years later, he formed a redemptorist congregation and became a bishop. Are you going through total humiliation today? Don't give up. This is a detour that will lead to a bigger destiny for your life. Let's now hear it to our feast builder, Cap Marky Bakiran. Good morning, Cap. Thank you, Brother RB. And talking about detour. <laughs> well, a detour can be the road to your bigger destiny. If you do two things. Let me teach you how to make your detour bring you to your bigger destiny. Joseph, uh, to move from slave to prisoner to governor, Joseph did two powerful things. First, he remained faithful. Kahit ano pa nangyari sa kanya, hey Joseph, he remained faithful to God. No matter how deep the pit or how dark the prison is, 
he just kept doing the right thing. Halimbawa, uh, when Joseph was a slave working for, or working in Potiphar's house, o oh, pwede niya namang sabihin, I don't deserve to be a slave, anong klaseng buhay ito, diba? This is, un- this is so unfair. Well, and he could have just, you know, uh, pwede naman siya kumilos ng hindi kaya. He could have, you know, he just, pwede namang na he just acted in a lousy way, but, Hindi yun ang ginawa niya. No? And Joseph said, I'll be the great slave in the world. Well, he did such an excellent job as a slave. Diba? So Potiphar appointed him as mayordomo, head of all other household servants. Now when Potiphar's wife wanted him, no? he was being seduced, huh? Joseph could have said, Oh, life is unfair anyway. Pagbibigyan ko na lang si madam. You know? Pero hindi yun ang ginawa niya. Because he said no to sin. When he was thrown in prison for a crime that he did not do, Joseph could have just, you know, he could have surrendered, you know, and I throw in the towel. You know? Pwede naman sumuko. But, you know, he could have said something like this also. You know, the hell with life. The hell with being good. Pero hindi niya ginawa yun. Well, he said, I'll be the greatest prisoner in the world. No matter what happened, he just kept doing the right thing. He was such a good prisoner. Ginalingan niya masyado. And the warden appointed him to be the mayor. Para i-manage yung ibang mga preso. Now, if you notice, Joseph Bloom, wherever, well, wherever he was, wherever he went. Now, if you want to be successful, you do need to bloom wherever you are planted, diba? So, uh, well, Joseph Bloom, wherever he is, wherever he was planted by the Lord. And wherever you are right now, remain faithful, ma. But you always give your best. You may not no, you may not be in the right circumstances. Like you, you may not be in the right job. You may not have the right tools. You may not be in the right place. So you may, you may not be with the right people. But do the right thing anyway, and God Himself will give you the right reward. Okay, see, Pino. <laughs> Uh, think about it. Where did Joseph learn to manage a country? No, he took management 101 in prison. Before he managed the country, he managed fellow slaves and fellow prisoners. That's why the Bible says, Yes, you will suffer for a short time, but after that, God will make everything right. However, Joseph, you know, wasn't passive. Oh, yes, he was being abused, but he kept looking for an opportunity to get out of the abuse. Second, remain open. Now, as you, as you walk through the detour, or a detour, believe me, there will be wonderful opportunities that will have, you know, appear before you, you know, opportunities to leapfrog to your success. The reason why a lot of people don't see the opportunities is because, you know, opportunities come dressed as responsibilities. Look at Joseph. When Potiphar asked him to take responsibility over his household, he said, Yes. When the prison warden asked him to you know, take responsibility over the prison, he said yes. When the pharaoh asked him to take responsibility over the entire country, well, he said yes. But some people are allergic to responsibilities. <laughs> well, and the same people will comply 
will actually will complain why they don't receive more blessings. Ito yung mga reklamador pa. Mga kapatid, here's the truth. If you want more blessings, you've got to want more. You've got to want more of those responsibilities. Blessings and responsibilities are two sides of the same coin. Well, let me give you an example. Why do managers earn more than messengers? Because managers have more responsibilities than messengers. Yeah. Now, no matter how long your deter is, Ma, but it remain faithful in open. No. Remain faithful. You know how long this no yung detour sa buhay ni Joseph. He became slave when he was 17. He became a governor of Egypt when he was 30 years old. Matt. <laughs> he was in detour for 13 long years. Perhaps, mga kapatid, you two have been waiting for a long time. Seemingly or seeming trap in your detour. Now, here's my final word to you, kapatid. Mga kapatid. <laughs> no matter how long, remain faithful and remain open. And one day, you'll see your bigger destiny become your bigger reality. Remain faithful and may know you. May your prayers and dreams come true, my friend. My hands stretched out towards the sky. You will never let me run dry. When I
we are, we are in deep. We know that you're there, Lord. You're always beside us. We will never stop praising and loving you as we continue to sing. Amen. 